Hello folks, we're back at the camp at Bancroft. And as you can no doubt see by this picture, we're in the middle of a gypsy moth infestation. Last year, on the north side of a lake north of us, I saw oaks that were completely stripped of vegetation and leaves and I thought they'd die. And unfortunately this year, once again, they're all stripped. But here at our camp, we didn't see any. Well, they sure made up for lost time because we have an incredible number of gypsy moth caterpillars here now. Oak, their number one choice in food, well, they're stripped. They also like birch, and as you can see here, this is tag alder. That's another one of their favorite foods. But unfortunately, they also eat white pine, spruce, and even tamarack. They've done a tremendous amount of damage. And it's not hard to imagine why. If you look at the numbers of them, and each one can eat up to a square meter of foliage in its journey from being an egg to becoming a moth. They're an eating and a pooping machine. The amount of fecal material they drop is incredible. This is the top of that same group of alders. Check out how many caterpillars are in here. They're literally everywhere. And if we look at the birch beside the alders, you notice it looks like fall. There aren't any leaves left at all. Here's an oak in the front lawn of our camp. You notice that I put duct tape sticky side out around the base. And it really did a good job at keeping back some of the caterpillars. But this tree was loaded with eggs. Oak is its favorite food. Look at that, a complete lack of foliage. They have absolutely stripped this tree. Now, unfortunately, this tree was quite stressed as it was and wasn't the healthiest. I hope this doesn't push it over the edge and we'll have to harvest it next year. Here's a beautiful little spruce on our front lawn at the camp. And as you can see, the caterpillars have just completely stripped it as well. And for a while we wondered why were there so many birds in the tree? That's when the caterpillars were first emerging. The birds were having a gourmet feast as well. A couple of mallards would walk out of the marsh behind me and stop here in the morning and feed underneath the tree. And at first we didn't know what, and then we realized the mallards were also eating caterpillars. Way to go, ducks! That little red pine and this group of white pine are all trees that I've planted here. And when they became infested, I thought, oh no! So I literally picked hundreds and hundreds of caterpillars off them. We'd come up every weekend. And I even sprayed with BKT, and that helped. But for the last week, I've been picking 50 or 60 caterpillars off each of these larger pines in a day. And now, all of a sudden, it's like somebody turned the switch off. They've really slowed down. The caterpillars have gone on to that point in their life cycle where they're starting to find a place to make a cocoon and emerge as a moth. Here's that same oak tree. And you can see in the fissures in the bark and the cracks, all the caterpillars that are creating cocoons as they transform themselves into moths. You can be assured that we will look after them before they get an opportunity to all become moths. This is the front of our camp. If you look at the canopy above the roof, it's easy to tell they're kind of picky eaters. Now you can see that they started on this birch in the center of the screen now. But look at the basswood beside it. They have literally stripped the canopy from it. And if we swivel around here, you'll notice this birch. They've eaten a lot of it. And that basswood, and there's a small aspen in there above the top of that cedar. It is literally stripped as well. These caterpillars are incredibly adaptive. They'll even eat the tops of cattails. I can't imagine anything less palatable or appetizing than that tough old green plant material. Well, it's beautiful to hear the birds. And it almost sounds like it's raining. It sounds like raindrops are hitting the maple leaves above my head. But it's not. It's caterpillar poop falling from the caterpillars in the birch tree, which is above the maple tree. It is amazing how much fecal material caterpillars produce. If you look at the ground in front of the cottage there, below the eaves, it looks like it's brown with leaves. 
looks like fall. All those leaf fragments are cuttings from what the caterpillar were eating, as well as mounds and mounds of caterpillar poop. Here is one of the offending caterpillars. Meet Mr. Gypsy Moth Caterpillar. I believe from what I've read this is a male, and it looks like he's just about ready to start the transformation into a, into a moth. Now notice all the long hairs on them. Apparently they contain histamine, and some people develop a nasty rash if they handle these caterpillars from that histamine. I don't, and my wife doesn't, literally to get rid of them. One of the recommended things was to create a bucket of water, put a little bit of soap in it, and just toss them in and they sink to the bottom, and that's what my wife was doing. I literally grab them and pull them in two and toss them aside. Well, I think I'll change the life of this fellow, and let's go see if we can find a few more. Isn't it amazing that you certainly can see their preference for birch? They've literally stripped the birch, and thankfully here they left the white pine and the spruce and the cedar. But we're going to go a place in a second here that you'll see where some poor cottager they literally stripped the great white pine standing all around their cottage. Oh well. Folks, what a beautiful afternoon and what a beautiful backdrop to shoot a video here. I just love hearing those red-winged blackbirds. It's almost hard to believe that the gypsy moths, the first significant population was reported in Ontario in 1969. And here we are, 2021, and they're spread from the west end of our province all the way to the east. And quite a wide swath, and doing a lot of damage this year. Let's hope that they're at the high point of their cycle and that next year is not a repeat of this year. Apparently there's three natural population controls. One is a little parasitic wasp that lays its eggs and the eggs deposited by the moth and of course it kills the moth eggs. The second is a virus that they pass between themselves and the third and the most effective is a fungal infection. And apparently in a damp year that fungal infection is quite effective. We've had over four inches of rain in the past five or six days. It's been a damp spring. Let's hope that it's doing its job. Folks, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching, and we look forward to seeing you again on Out of the House. Once again, here we are, roughing it at camp. We are blessed.